So uh, let me set up the uh, problem I'm interested in. So we are interested in the following the Poisson data, and uh, here yi is uh, generated by Poisson distribution, and uh, lambda is the Poisson parameter, and uh, so we all know that the, it's uh, distributed as follows. And uh, so it depends on the uh, specific application. So here the Poisson parameter may be related to the uh, unknowns that we are interested in in different ways. For example, instead, uh, one simplified model is uh, we have this exponential over there. And uh, for PET imaging, so we have just this inner product directly. And if we assume that uh, uh, the data points they are generated uh, uh, independent, identically distributed for the Gaussian distribution, uh, Poisson distribution, then we have this kind of likely function and uh, each of them is a Poisson distribution. And uh, uh, we are doing Im image reconstruction, so we also have the prior uh, distribution on the signal we are interested in. And uh, there are many different priors, and uh, the simplest one is the uh, Gaussian prior. And uh, we can have also sparsely prior or uh, total variation or anatomical priors. There are many possible priors so we can incorporate over here. And once we have this uh, uh, likelihood function and the prior distribution, so we can form, uh, form the corresponding uh, posterior distribution. And uh, w as we have seen earlier, so the posterior is uh, just uh, proportional to the product of these two guys. And so the usual uh, way to proceed is that uh, now we have the posterior di uh, distribution and uh, we will consider the point estimate from the posterior distribution. So the uh, most popular one is the maximum posterior estimate and uh, that's something we have seen a lot this uh, early this morning. And uh, different from that, uh, so, uh, what I'm interested in is that uh, I try to explore the uh, posterior more systematically. And because this posterior contains uh, uh, actually a large number of uh, consistent solutions and uh, all of them, they should be valid to some degree. And so we want to use the whole information to do some uncertainty analysis of the uh, some point estimate we may obtain from other means. So in order to do that, so we need to explore the posterior space, uh, space uh, uh, properly. And there are many different ways to do this. And the most uh, classical way is that uh, we apply some uh, sampling technique, like uh, the Markov chain Monte Carlo or some other uh, sampling technique. And uh, so all these sampling techniques, so they have not been uh, actually so widely used uh, in uh, for Poisson data, and uh, there are several reasons for this. Uh, one reason is that uh, uh, doing sampling uh, with real medical imaging actually is uh, quite uh, challenging, so because of the high dimensionality. And another thing is that uh, the sampling method themselves, they are uh, not so easy to apply in the sense that, uh, for example, the convergence of the uh, method may, not, may be also not so easy to diagonalize. So, so that's the uh, reason that uh, uh, these uh, uh, sampling techniques have not been uh, so widely used. But uh, on the other hand, so we still want to have some uh, more information from the posterior on the instead of the point estimate. And uh, so my talk is about that, uh, how can we apply some uh, maybe approximation to obtain uh, some estimate uh, from this uh, posterior with point estimate and also some credible intervals. So that actually we have some, still keep some uncertain information. And uh, the technique I'm going to apply is the so-called approximate influence. So the basic idea is uh, uh, quite simple. So th there are basically two steps. The first step is that uh, we, uh, by using some uh, prob probability metric, so we uh, equivalently formulate uh, this uh, uh, posterior di uh, distribution into some optimization problem. And uh, this fir first step is uh, exact. And then, so we restrict uh, our approximation to a subclass which is hopefully uh, much easier to deal with, for example, like a Gaussian. And then we just uh, minimize uh, this quantity over this uh, subclass. And uh, in this way, so we will obtain some approximation. And uh, there are many uh, approximate influence techniques, so they can uh, describe uh, the, by this general framework, like a relational Bayesian or expectation propagation and uh, many others, so they can be uh, broadly uh, described by this uh, idea. So in practice, so the one uh, user most often is just a Kubler library divergence from P, P to Q, so it's uh, defined uh, as follows. And uh, if we restrict our approximation Q to be a Gaussian distribution, then we have this kind of uh, parameterization. And uh, one can immediately see that uh, this uh, divergence is not 
uh, not symmetric, and uh, this will have an important consequence uh, later on. So based on this idea, so I will show you uh, uh, two examples. So uh, how to deal with the Poisson data, at least uh, in some uh, very uh, simple situation. Uh, the first example is about uh, PET imaging. So we consider the Poisson parameter is just uh, uh, this uh, inner product. And we consider uh, Laplace prior, uh, type prior, so we have some uh, sparsity. And uh, in that case, so the prior is uh, uh, yeah, given as a follow. Here, here LI, just some uh, linear map. And for, so with this uh, prior and also the uh, corresponding uh, likelihood function, so we can write down the, uh, uh, the posterior distribution, at least up to some uh, constant. And uh, so what we are going to do is that uh, we will look for a Gaussian approximation to the posterior distribution uh, generality in this manner. And uh, so we will do th uh, this uh, using the so-called uh, expectation propagation. So I will explain it on the next slide. And uh, the reason that uh, we can use this kind of technique is a, a very simple observation that uh, the posterior distribution can be factorized into this kind of form. And uh, each term involves Actually, it depends only on one variable. And uh, so that's the most uh, crucial observation. And uh, then in expectation propagation, so we try to approximate uh, each term by a uh, Gaussian approximation. So we have a bunch of uh, Gaussian approximations, and uh, all of them, so we is uh, approximating some terms from uh, the posterior distribution. And then the algorithm uh, by itself is uh, also quite simple. So we uh, proceed uh, iteratively. So at each step, so we first uh, select uh, one uh, factor from the posterior distribution. And uh, then we multiply all the other Gaussian approximation. In this way, so we will get a non-Gaussian approximation. And uh, then, one, so this is just a contraction. And the next step is that uh, we try to match the moment, the first three moments of this uh, uh, Gaussian approximation with this uh, non-Gaussian approximation. And uh, by matching moments, so we are doing some high dimensional integral. And uh, because it's a very specific structure, it turns out that this is a high dimensional integral involved uh, in the mo moment matching step. So they can actually be reduced to a one dimensional integral for the, uh, because of the structure. And uh, so if we are able to uh, perform these, uh, all these one dimensional integrals, then we will be able to carry out uh, uh, these two steps uh, iteratively and hope that uh, eventually, uh, if we repeat enough steps, so it will converge. So, so the task uh, reduced to, uh, to do the high, uh, this one dimensional include. And uh, for Poisson data, this is uh, not so trivial, but uh, one can indeed uh, so carry out these uh, integrals uh, stably and also accurately. So here's an uh, outline of the, how this actually proceeds. So, uh, Basically, so we need to compute the integral uh, at each iteration for some integral. So let me uh, show you that how, how this works. And uh, so the example is uh, quite academic, so I apologize for that. And so we just consider the Shapiro uh, logan phantom and uh, with the forward map by the standard Lattin transform uh, with the different angles and uh, different parameters. And so here's the uh, exact, exact image we are interested in and uh, then the sinogram corresponding Poisson data and uh, uh, with uh, different uh, incident angles and also for different uh, counter levels. And so here's uh, some results for, uh, for the moderated count case and so, so we compare our results with the standard MIP estimate because it's uh, the ben benchmark and uh, so here's the mean so compute here by this uh, expectation propagation procedure I just described. And uh, you can see that uh, they are quite close to each other. And uh, so we can also compute the corresponding uh, more quantitative measures like uh, PSNR or SSM. So what can observe that they are more or less uh, comparable to each other. But uh, so instead of only this mean estimate, so we can also uh, get a actually covalence estimate. And so with this uh, covalence estimate, so we can put some error bars on the mean estimate. And uh, so similar observation can be made so if we have uh, low count data. So basically the, 
I mean, API estimate and uh, expectation propagation results, so they are more or less compa comparable. But uh, we also have the corresponding uncertainty estimate. So the con uncertainty levels uh, here, so it's um, a bit higher because of low count. And here, so I show you just uh, one slide. So we have the uh, mean estimate, and then because the, we have the valence information, so we c put an error bar on the mean estimate. And so this allows us to assess, for example, if we are given some other uh, estimates, uh, we can say something how re reasonable is this uh, estimate with our construction uh, in the Bayesian sense. So this is about uh, the PET, PET imaging. So for uh, over there, so we have this uh, uh, Poisson parameter is just uh, equal to the inner product. And uh, there's another case, so, which is interesting, is uh, uh, for a very simplified model for a spectre. And uh, so here the Poisson parameter is related to the exponential of this uh, inner product. And uh, in this case, so for uh, later on, so, uh, we consider only this uh, Gaussian prior. Surely Gaussian prior itself is probably not so exciting uh, for imaging, but uh, uh, we'll see that actually this will give us uh, a lot of analytical insights. And uh, uh, with these reconstructions, so we can also write down the corresponding uh, posterior distribution quite immediately. So it uh, looks quite ugly, but uh, it has this kind of explicit form. And uh, again, so we uh, look for a, a Gaussian approximation uh, best in the Kuberg libel uh, divergence. And it turns out that uh, in that case, minimizing the Kuberg libel divergence is equivalent to maximize uh, the so called elbow. Or so, actually, so we can write down the corresponding uh, functional in explicit form. So, we have this kind of uh, complicated form uh, given here. So, this is one of the rare examples that actually we can work out uh, uh, the functional we are in, uh, actually working with. So it's uh, quite instructive that actually to have a closer look uh, about this functional. So if we check the first few terms in the red, so this is something uh, like uh, the likely, uh, likelihood function we had uh, for the MAP estimate. But there's a small uh, twist. So that it also involves a covariance. And this covariance arises because we are looking for a Gaussian approximation. So we have a distribution. And so this, uh, this term will also enter into the uh, likelihood for the function. And then there's a second, uh, second term in magenta uh, color. So uh, you see that uh, this uh, we can easily recognize. So this is just a standard uh, uh, L2 penalty we, uh, we see very often. And uh, then, so there's another term which involves only the co uh, covalence uh, we are looking for. And uh, so this is some kind of penalty on the covalence uh, uh, where, uh, and if we work a, a bit more closer, so this is just uh, some kind of divergence from the posterior to the prior. Actually, it's a uh, uh, Bergman divergence between uh, two, two positive uh, definite matrices. And then there's some, uh, some constant which is not too important. So uh, this formula just shows us that if we try to incorporate uh, the covariance into something some functional like a Tikhonov regularization, then probably we should uh, try to uh, use involve some terms uh, like uh, this uh, Bergman divergence for the covalence. That seems a natural way uh, to to do. Uh, because of this uh, uh, explicit form, so we can actually see a few things about uh, the functional. For example, the functional is uh, uh, strictly jointly concave uh, with respect to the parameters we are interested in. So this means that uh, the problem is uh, quite uh, uh, quite easy. So from the theoretical perspective, everything is uh, just like a uh, convex. And because of that, uh, so we can also show that uh, uh, we will have a unique uh, uh, optimal approximation in the Gaussian family. And uh, uh, further, so we can develop uh, uh, alternating minimizations uh, that. Uh, we can prove that it will converge, always converge. So by, by means of automating minimization, so this means that we fix the, uh, the mean and then just minimize with the covariance. 
and then fix covalence and uh, with uh, optimize the re uh, with respect to mean. And if we just uh, repeat the two step uh, and this procedure so can be shown that uh, it will always converge. And we can also develop some fixed point type of algorithm uh, for which we can also show the convergence because the uh, nice structure of the problem. So let me just show you that uh, uh, here's uh, one very simple example for one dimensional problem. And uh, the problem parameter dimension is very low. And in that case, so we can also perform uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, the golden standard. And we can see that uh, by doing the uh, evolutional Gaussian approximation and uh, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, so the result we obtain is actually very close to each other. And uh, for both mean and the uh, credible intervals. So this uh, somehow shows that uh, by doing uh, this uh, evolutional Gaussian approximation is actually a very good choice, at least for uh, this example. And so here's another example so, uh, about deep learning. So it's a bit simpler. And so we can obtain the, for example, this exact one and we have the congestion and also the corresponding valence. And because we have the valence, so we can put the error bar on the congestion uh, we, uh, we obtain. So with that, I think I'm ready to summarize. So I hope I have convinced you that the approximate inference technique so which have been quite widely studied in machine learning. So they actually have some potential for uncertain quantification for Poisson type of data. And I have shown you that at least uh, expectation propagation work reasonably well for, uh, uh, for PET data. And the relational Gaussian uh, so works reasonably well so for at least for simplified uh, uh, spectrum model. And surely so one can go beyond uh, these uh, Nowadays, it's quite a standard approach, so one can move to uh, deep generative models, uh, more fancy models. And uh, so, so these are two uh, references so where you can find all the technical details and uh, all the lengthy formulas. And uh, so if you're interested, so. And with that, I would like to stop over here. <laughs>